Welcome to Jeremy's IT Lab. This is a complete course for the CCNP NCORE Enterprise Core exam. In this video, we will look at some basic features of CML, Cisco Modeling Labs, the platform we are using for labs in this course. In this video, I will assume that you have already installed CML. If you want to learn how to install CML, check out my video before this on that topic. If you have any difficulties installing it, the CML documentation is your best resource. Try a Google search for CML installation guide to find that. Note that if you are using a different platform such as GNS3 or EVNG to do the labs for this course, in the course files I will include startup configs for all network devices so you can recreate the lab and copy paste the configs. First, how can you access CML? After installing CML, open whatever hypervisor you are using. In my case, I use VMware Workstation Pro. From here, just start up the VM. I've already started mine, but if it was not started yet, I would right click on the VM name from the library here, go to power and then click on startup guest. Exactly how you turn on a VM will depend on your platform, but it's straightforward. During installation, you configure the IP address of your CML VM, either by telling it to use DHCP or by statically configuring an IP. In my case, I statically configured it as 192.168.1.100, which is an IP address in my home network, which uses the subnet 192.168.1.0/24. To access CML, use a web browser to access the IP address stated here. So, now I will open a web browser and use it to access my CML VM. I've already bookmarked it here, along with a couple other CML related links such as the CML documentation. When I try to access CML, my browser gives me a warning because I'm using HTTPS to connect, but my CML VM doesn't have a valid certificate. This might be alarming when visiting a website, but I'm just connecting to my own VM, so there's no need to worry. I'll click on Advanced, and then Continue. Here is the login screen for CML. Type in the username and password you configured during installation, and here is the dashboard. Here, you can see a list of labs you have made in CML or imported into CML. To create a new lab, you can click on the Add button here in the top right. But what I want to show you is how you can import the lab files I provide in this course. Of course, I also recommend making your own labs as part of your studies. But for my lab videos, I recommend downloading my lab files and importing them. It's simple. Just click on Import in the top right. Here, you can select the YAML file for the lab. Here is the file for the first lab of the course, Layer 2 Forwarding, so I'll select that file. Then click Import down here, and it's ready. So I'll just click Go to Lab, and here it is. Before checking out the CML interface a bit, let's start these nodes so they have enough time to boot up. Routers and switches take much longer to boot up in CML than the simulated devices in Packet Tracer. There are a couple ways to boot these devices up, but since this is a small lab, I'll do it one by one like this, by hovering my cursor over each node and then clicking the play button. Okay, now the devices are booting up, so let's explore some basics of CML. Note that I'm no CML expert, and what I do know about CML is just from trying it out, reading documentation, and googling. So I recommend doing all of those if you really want to learn CML. But let's look at some basics. First, if you want to add devices to a topology, click on the Add Nodes tab on the right here. These are the available nodes. Note that the router I used for this topology is iOS V, and the switch is iOS V L2. I recommend using these nodes when you make your own labs. They are fairly lightweight, meaning they don't require a lot of resources to run. To view the resources each node requires, just hover over the icon here in the Add Nodes tab. For example, how about iOS V? It uses 512 megabytes of RAM and one virtual CPU. Let's compare that to another of the router nodes, such as this CSR1000V. Actually, we call it CSR1KV. 3 gigabytes of RAM and one vCPU. So, as you can see, the iOS V router is much lighter weight, so I'll be using it for labs in this course, instead of something like this CSR1KV. 
Note that you can adjust the amount of resources a node uses. I'll add an iOS V router. To do so, just drag and drop the device, and before starting it, click on the node and go to the Simulate tab. Scroll down a bit to the Compute section, and here you can click on RAM to adjust it from the default of 512 megs. I generally use the defaults in CML, but if a node is running slowly and your computer has enough spare resources, you can increase the RAM used by a device. If you are short on RAM, you could also reduce the amount of RAM here. In that case, the device might run slowly, but it might be necessary depending on your resources. Another option here is CPU limit. By default, it's 100%, but you can lower it to prevent the node from hogging all of your VM's CPU resources if needed. I'll just leave it at the defaults, and since I want to demonstrate something later, I will start this node now by hovering over it and clicking the play button. Now, what options are there for switches? The iOS VL2 that I'm using for switch one in this lab is the only real option. Let's see the resources it uses. Hover over iOS VL2 here, and as you can see, it requires 768 megs of RAM and one vCPU. So only slightly more resource intensive than the iOS V, which required 512 megs of RAM. But the only other switches are the NXOS 9K, which runs a different operating system, not iOS, and is also a lot more resource intensive than iOS VL2. It requires eight gigs of RAM and two vCPUs. And there is also the unmanaged switch, which you can't even configure. The unmanaged switch is an option in routing labs when you just need a dumb switch to forward frames, but don't need to configure anything else like VLANs. In the info here, it says this is a simple virtual switch, no memory or CPU settings, no configuration. So I may use it in some routing labs, but in labs where I want to use the CLI of a Cisco IOS switch, we will be using iOS VL2. By the way, the NXOS 9K node is a Cisco Nexus switch. Nexus is Cisco's line of data center switches. If you ever study for CCNP data center, you'll definitely be learning about Nexus switches, but they aren't used in the CCNP enterprise. As for these three servers, I used the server node. It's a tiny core Linux node, and it's very lightweight. When I hover over the icon, you can see it only needs 128 megs of RAM. This node is very useful if you just need a host to do things like ping, test out DHCP, etc. Anyway, let me add an unmanaged switch to the topology to show you how to connect devices. It's easy. Just hover your cursor over a node and click on the link icon, and now click on the device you want to connect it to. I'll connect it to the new iOS V router. Here, you can select which interface on each device you want to connect. The unmanaged switch has eight ports by default, and iOS V has four, but I'll show you how to add more if needed. I'll click on Create Link, and that's it. Now, if you want to delete a link, just click on the link itself, and under the Link Info tab, click on Delete Link. That's it. Now, if you want to add more interfaces to a device, Click on the device and check out the Interfaces tab. Note that to add more interfaces, the device must be stopped, meaning powered off, and in a wiped state. I'll mention the wiped state in a minute, but since I just added the switch and haven't powered it on, it is both stopped and wiped. So I'll add four interfaces, and now you can see there are a total of 12, from port 0 to port 11. To delete a node, Go to the Node Info tab, and then click on Delete Node. Now it's gone. Note that to delete a node, it must also be stopped and wiped. Let me demonstrate that with the iOS V router I added. Under the Node Info tab, note that Delete Node is grayed out. So, first I must stop the node. To do that, I could hover my mouse over the icon and click the Stop button, or another way is to click on the Simulate tab and click on Stop. I'll return to the Node Info tab, but note that I still can't delete it. Even though I haven't configured the device, I did start it, and that means I will have to wipe it. So, return to the Simulate tab and click on Wipe Node. This will explain what wiping does, 
it removes the VM associated with this node. I'll click on Confirm. Now, if I go to the Node Info tab again, I can delete the node. Now let's look at a couple of the tabs at the bottom of the screen. This is what's available when not selecting a device. From the Simulate tab, I can use Stop Lab to stop all of the devices at once, or Start Lab to start all of them at once, rather than starting and stopping them one by one as I did before. The Download Lab option will save the device configurations as a YAML file to allow you to save and share the lab. That's how I make the lab files for this course. When I loaded this lab, it was from a YAML file I downloaded here in the Simulate tab. Let's take a look at one of these running devices. I'll click on Switch 1. First, under the Node Info tab, this is where you can change the node name, which changes how it displays on the network diagram. For example, I'll change this to Switch 2, and now the name on the diagram has changed. In the Simulate tab, you can start, stop, and wipe the node. The Connectivity tab shows a list of the device's connections. And then in the Console tab, you can connect to the device's console port to access the CLI. So let's try a show command. I'll use Enable to get to Privileged Exec Mode, and then do Show Interfaces Status. As you can see, iOS v L2 only has four interfaces by default, and they're all connected now. But remember, you can add more if needed. If you want to change the appearance of the terminal, click here on Settings in the top right. For example, let's try the Cisco Blue theme. I like to set the font size to the largest, which is 20, especially for doing videos to make it easier to see. Click on Save, and now here's the new CLI theme. The last thing I'll show you today is the Edit Config tab. If you want to export a lab to a YAML file using the Download Lab option I showed earlier, you should first go to the Edit Config tab of your devices and click on Fetch from Device. This will take the configs from your device and save it here. So when you convert the configs to a YAML file with the Download Lab option, the configs will be saved there. Otherwise, they won't, so you'll download your lab, but none of the devices will have their configuration saved. Now, at the bottom of the screen, you can see some percentages for CPU, memory, and disk usage. I'm going to click off of this switch, and go to the Simulate tab and click on Stop Lab. You should see those CPU and memory numbers go down, although this is a small lab, so they weren't very high to begin with. Okay, this video was a brief introduction to CML. There's still lots more we could look at, but I think that's enough to get started with the course. Throughout the course, I will be introducing more features as needed. Like I said earlier, I'm no CML expert, and what I do know, I learned from experimenting in CML, reading the CML documentation, and also Googling sometimes when I have questions. So if you want to get more comfortable with CML, I recommend you do the same. That's all for this video. Before finishing this video, let me thank my JCMP level channel members. To become a member, please click the Join button under the video. Thanks to Yonatan Makara, Boson Software, Velvi Jacum, George Streeter, Funny Dart, Nasir Chowdhury, Gustavo B.R., Gerard Baker, Marcel Lord, Pavel M., Dragos Hirnea, Mayor Salmon, Mazen Anderson, Vitaus194, Gina Lindley, Nehemia, Bold1C1U, Mark Jackson, Michael Carroll, Gerald Guiam, Gabriel Braga, Renan Marias, Hector Hernandez, Ali Polat, Mara Tuba, R. Nelson, Roji Kuriakos, Roscoe Roy Gamer YT, Owad, Arpad Konives, Five Feet, Daniel Brown, Emiliano Correa, Leonardo Souza, Tricky Mickey 123456, Scott Thompson, Jose Alvarez, Kevin Hayes, ES, William Rosario, and Hussein Yavuz. Sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly, but thank you so much for your support. Thanks to you and my other supporters, I am able to make these videos and release them for free on YouTube, so I really appreciate the support. Another great way to support the channel is to like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this video with others. 
So if this video was helpful, I'd appreciate it if you did any of those. Thanks for watching. Thank you.